Somebody is ready. Ho oh, oh. ho. Somebody is ready. How did that? She ready. Who said that? I think it's a, it's a song. No, no. She ready. That's probably one of them housewives. Oh. She ready. Oh, maybe, maybe so. She ready now. I don't, I don't watch them. <laughs> I don't either. No. Yo, yo, yo! It's your girl Jessica S. Smith, and welcome back to Just As the Podcast, where we create a safe space for kingdom entrepreneurs and creatives to have fun, decompress, and guess what? Just, Just ask. ask. <laughs> hey, y'all! Y'all, it's been a week. <laughs> a whole one it's been a whole can you say whole week whole week How, da, 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 da. man but this week was weekend it was weekend it was child what Ch- made the week week child oh listen okay your girl just got done not too long ago with the 40 day ah 40 days of focus 40 days of focus so if you didn't if you didn't get to participate it's because you didn't sign up on under jessicasmith.com uh forward slash focus that was the that was the that it was lit it was lit so what led you into 40 days of focus um 40 days of focus the lord holy Mm -hmm. spirit everything's holy spirit lit in my book I stuff that just don't make sense. It is so it seems like it's so random, y'all. It's it seems so random. But I'm glad I did it. I learned a lot about myself. Mm-hmm. Right? I learned about a lot about the Lord. And I learned a lot about my purpose beyond just making myself a one thing. Like, um, I was having a conversation with one of my friends, actually Bree, yeah. today. And she kept bringing up the scripture, too much to whom much is given, much is required. And I was like, God, you have me doing multiple things. I work full time. I'm studying. I am in ministry. I serve two. uh, I serve multiple ministries, two of which are in these amazing projects right now Mm -hmm. that I am a part of. Like, um, so it's a lot going on. And so I'm like, God, how can I be uh, great or excellent um, in these places? And my aunt reminded me this morning that. There's a difference between being excellent and walking in perfectionism. And so I'm not perfect, but God is. Mm. And so I'm called to be excellent, not perfect. And so um, (laughs) I'm going to tell y'all what I'm laughing in a minute because we got a special guest today. Special, special. It's real special. I'm going to see if she cooperate. But, um, yeah, so this week was been, been weakened because it was like, toward the latter time of the the uh challenge so we the last 10 days was included with the fast the first 30 days we just we prayed monday through friday at 4 30 in the morning and we had focus group which included 90 minutes of focus so we focused on uh projects um creating content reading um uh, whatever i even taught on creativity and how everybody has a creative gene. Everybody has a creative flow. You just have to tap into it, which they enjoyed. Um, built a community. I'm going to go ahead and shout out Miss Janice. Shout out uh, to CJ. Shout out to T. Denise. Shout out to Catherine. Shout out to Stacy. Um, Mama Ann. Coach D. Um, uh, Brittany Parks. Uh, Tanya. Like these were the people that like were consistently involved in this um in this community and they were they were loud and proud about being involved, baby. They was they would let me know this was working for them. And so I will do this again at some point. I know I don't know if it's gonna be like looking like forty days, but it's gonna be centered around focus because it sometimes we we mismanage our time, which mismanages our focus. Yeah. And so I think what we were able to do was not only focus on on the spiritual but the practical and that's what i that's what i'm learning my purpose is making what we wrap up in the spirit practical how do we make that thing plain yeah i think um it's so dope because um we don't know why god 
does what he does. Mm -hmm. Um, But the reality is he knows the beginning from the end. Mm -hmm. So these things, like when the testings come, the trials come, when he gives us things to do that don't make sense, Mm -hmm. um, we have to be obedient because the obedience birthed out what's what's in there right That's so, so you're you're like oh yeah well um you may not have known something was in there until you have been tested in that thing that's good. I was talking to one of my um a leader earlier this week and that's what he was saying. He was like, I didn't know that I had a magazine in me until I started, you know, um producing pictures or whatever whatever the little task that seems minimum was. I didn't know this big thing was in me until I started being obedient and moving in these other things. Yeah. And the little things may not be the big thing, but the little things build the character that's yeah. gonna be able to sustain when you get to the point that God's trying to get you to. All these things are just building um it's building our character it's building these skills it's building the confidence not yeah. necessarily in ourselves per se but like dang god like you've brought me this far and you've given me all these things and we just have to trust that as we continue to walk and as he continues to add on to our plates that he we just have to ask him for the capacity to manage it all because yeah. he wouldn't he wouldn't give it to us if it wasn't in us already right, right. that's that that was i think that was perfectly said like the thing, what the biggest thing that you said, and here we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. The biggest thing that you said, woman of God, is that it's already in you. It's already in us. It just has to be activated. And so um, one of the things, like, um, like I said, shout out to CJ. She revealed to me that, you know, that thing – she was harboring, or not harboring, but holding stuff like her book, mm-hmm. launching, all that good stuff. But this group made her or encouraged her to push forward and focus on what God had already ordained her to do. She mm-hmm. knew it was in her, yeah. but sometimes you need that community yeah. to push. That goes back to what we talked about weeks ago. I think we, that was probably one of the first episodes of season three where we were talking about what's the, the purpose of the coach. Yeah. The purpose of the coach is to be a support system and accountability system um, for us to to go. Yeah. We sometimes we don't go unless others are involved. Yeah. And that's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to say it's iron sharpens iron. People yeah. think it's just that's just a two way thing. No, sometimes we just need a whole group. Hey, this is what this group is doing. Right. This is what this is what we're doing. And the the, the gag is the woman of God told me she was like, Yeah, you're gonna end up doing this again. But it's not gonna be free because mm-hmm. we we learned too much. We that this was too valuable. It was valuable. Like these are like I was so pr- I was proud of myself, but I was so proud of the community. Like yeah. these are people we were, we especially the last ten days we were consistently waking up at four thirty in the morning, getting it in, praying, getting it in, getting the word of the Lord, yeah. and focusing on the word of the Lord, yeah, to the point where the last day, the fortieth day, like. The your girl was crying. Mm-hmm. YouTube, you can watch it. It's public. Like you can go back and watch. Uh, you can go on YouTube and watch every every day. If you see so the, the days that were skipping, those were the first 30 days because we only we, on the weekends we rested and we scheduled and we planned and stuff like that. But those last 10 days were for fasting. And so we went, we prayed day every day, 10 days straight, wow. which was like, that was a whole challenge for me because, you know, your girl, like, I, where where is my sleep? <laughs> Where is where the is sleep direct. schedule? Where is direct? Where is the sleep schedule? Let me pause. Why are you, why are you smelling Excuse my kneecaps? Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you come here? Can you come here? She's smelling my kneecap. Come here. Can you, I want to introduce y'all if y'all can see. Let's see. I got it now. Amor, can you say hey? This is this is my dog, y'all. Ooh, you licking my makeup. Y'all actually wore makeup today. This is my baby. Say hey, Amor. <laughs> she really did try she to really say hey. Did she, she looked. She looked at the um the cam uh the mic. Thank you. She said I done made my debut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my baby. Amor is five. She's a pit mix, and um I've had her um since she was a baby. So um yeah she she can't is mummy mummy day yeah. Mom, come to work come, with mummy yeah, bring it bring your kid she, to work and day. she is so, hey okay you gonna hey, have okay. to get down all right all right woman of god hey hey, hey woman of god you <laughs> call her by her don't be ghetto <laughs> woman of god don't be ghetto. woman of god <laughs> sit down <laughs> look look i talk to amor like she a, she a real person that's what they tell me um my folks were like amor is not a dog 
Amore is not a doll. Mm. But speaking of Amore, let me tell you. Okay, so fun fact. Girl, if you don't sit down. Fun fact. So Amore, I got Amore while I was living in Pensacola. All right? And your girl, you know, first of all, Florida, Floridians, Flor, what? Here we go, here we go. I ain't doing something right here. We, just keep, you just every keep. don't y'all realize that every episode we just need to go true. back to every it's episode. Not, clip not, one, touch just it's a not. mic adjustment. Clip two, mic adjustment. Cause I don't get it right. I, mean, I don't. We, I don't get it right. We learning. We, we learning, learning though. Together. We we learning, we learning cause yes. child, I messed up the mic. But anyway, so I got a more. As an emotional support dog, and when I was in Pensacola, so you know your girl's single, right? And so not only was I single in Pensacola, I didn't know that one person, not one soul. Okay, moving to Pensacola, that was probably the hard, the most challenging part of. Well, let me let me not lie, that was, that was probably a lie. That was one of the most. I don't think it was most challenging. I think this year, what I experienced this year might have been a little bit more challenging. Okay. Mm. Um, but I got a more and at first I didn't even want a dog, like did not want a dog. And all of a sudden, uh, my cousin, shout out to Sherman, he, um, his dog ended up having babies. And so he was just pubbing these dogs, pubbing these dogs. And one day I was at my sister's house and my, he ended up bringing three of the dogs I think it was two or three of the dogs with him a more end up having being one of them so he had asked me to hold a more because he had just given her a bath them a bath he asked me to hold her um and me holding her led to me um keeping her like I literally she got her name people think it's because she got a heart on head I didn't see that before folks started saying it it's not really I don't know it's just a white spot it was <laughs> it's just a white spot no Amor got her name because when she started on my lap and then she started stretching out on like her her paws her hind legs is that what it is the back leg okay. the back paws like right. yeah. mm-hmm. hind, hind legs, legs. Well, on my on my lap, and then her, I don't know, some front front paws. <laughs> I'm sure there's a proper whatever. It's a proper day. For Y'all know what we talking about. A front paws were on my chest, so it was. I was like, "Baby, are you trying to get up?" And she, uh, I just let her stretch out like that, but then I let let her lift up, and then she wraps herself around my heart. No, oh. like. Oh. she literally wraps herself around my heart and that's when I was sold I was like I could not stop thinking about her and so I told my cousin the next day I said hey don't you sell that dog that's she's my dog oh. and her name is Amore. Amore that's how Amore got her name girl I didn't call you to to get up though Sit down now. she is definitely a community dog mm-hmm. she is not sometimes she act like she's not my dog she loves everyone mm-hmm. and everyone loves her so that's fun fact fun fact about the dog because what what i've learned of having a more is that i am going to be a good mother i oh i didn't know i was going there today oh, okay oh there it oh, is babe. we out here now single swim okay single i mean swim. you can't go back we, we out here. y'all been having me talking we out here y'all been having me i mean talking, this talking. Is all up in your business we out here now. Let's go. Okay. She said, so my, st- I don't even know if I've ever heard you say that before. I haven't. Okay. Not out loud. Okay. Oh, we out, we out here now. So, what do I mean by that? I um, my parents divorced when I was seven. I think they they separated when I was seven. So I was in first. Let's just go with grade because you. I remember grades mm-hmm. better than age. I was in first grade when they separated. The the divorce was final in second grade, right? And so, um, my my mm, the lipstick Uh-oh. was trying to Uh-oh. lip. Uh-oh. What was that? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> See, this is why I don't wear makeup. I ain't my lips ain't never got stuck together. So tickled. Okay. All right. This is it. All right, there we go. But anywho, 
So um, my mom had, you know, at going through the divorce, my I lived with my mom for a little bit, but that was kind of short lived. And my dad ended up uh, gaining custody of us. Me and us is my sister and I. So Kendall, Kendall, y'all saw her in Sister Sister episode. Go back and watch that because that was lit. Um, Liddy, y'all saw her and I look alike because we got the same parents, like mom, same mom and daddy. Like out of all of our siblings, we the ones got the same like mommy and daddy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my dad um was awarded custody of and I hate how that sound. That sounds so bad. But that's what happened. What he was awarded to. custody of Kendall and I. Um and so we lived with my dad. We we lived with uh the good Dr. Reverend. He ain't no Dr. Wick. <laughs> Reverend Kenneth W. Smith. And um my dad is a great father, a great father. He did as, as he did as good as he could, you know, as or well as he is whichever one. Mm-hmm. Don't correct me. Don't correct. Don't if you don't have no podcast, don't come over here correct me. <laughs> or even if you do, still don't come over here and correct yeah. nobody. Okay, thank you. We we, we know it you know, out. You know okay, we trying to figure right. out the words. All right. So um yeah, my dad, but he's my dad trying to play. Two, uh, roles. two roles right so uh, a long time like i didn't really experience a woman in the house until my sister's mom that's kirsten's mom came in the house and that was short-lived they ended up getting divorced and um yeah that 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 didn't work out uh so i didn't really i had mother figures right around but my mom was out of state like she was mostly you know living in different states during my adolescent years to the point where when my dad did get remarried to my bonus mother I was out the house Mm. so I questioned my ability to be a good mom based upon what I didn't see yeah and so um I didn't think I didn't I was so concerned and then Ooh, this this gonna be real. So when I was living out, you know, I mean, when I was in that relationship with person A that I was talking mm-hmm. about, um, maybe a few episodes ago now, um, I wanted to get pregnant. Yeah, I, that's real. Yeah, like I'm, I wanted to get that's pregnant, real. and I didn't get pregnant or whatever. It's like I was scared to, but I was like, I felt like I had something to prove. Not not necessarily even about just motherhood, but um, but just, I guess, in that relationship. Because I felt like he would want me if I had, you know, the child or what desire me the way I wanted him to desire me if I had a child. But thank you, Lord. Your, gra- your grace and mercy. <laughs> That's that um, similar to that story. What's the story? The, the sisters that was married to the same guy, and then one of them was, uh, um, I think one. I think, who, who was that? You t- you you're not talking about Rachel and Panina, who who she thought like if she had the babies that he would he would um um no oh want, no uh, that that was um I feel like it was two sisters uh-huh. and like they was both kind of with the same guy yeah and one of them he delighted in you know that was his like. His it was a yeah, cause he the dad. That's the um the daddy tricked him. Mm. The daddy tricked him. We talking about the Bible, yeah, y'all. This somewhere the Bible is yeah. a whole soap that's what, opera. That's what just came. That's what just came. We got to figure said. out the but, name yeah, of that. Yeah, um, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. But that's what she felt like. Oh, if I could, you know, give him a baby. Yeah, or a few. And she had multiple. Of, or a few. Mm-hmm. And then the he last would love son, me. he would love me like he loved her. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, but then when she gave her last the child to God, juicy. it is juicy. Like it's got a full, it's full of drama. It is. It's like, full it's of real life. Like, like you, if you really, you really want to, you know, some drama, you ain't got to even go to Zane them. Just go to the Bible. Like just the world. Old Testament. The Old Testament. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the Old Testament. Like the whole story about Noah when he, they got off that boat and he got lit, mm-hmm. and his son went and told the other sons about him being lit, and then. He cursed him for that because yeah. his other son has covered him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's a whole moment. Like mm-hmm. he was drinking off the clock. Oh, he was like he lit. was straight lit. I like, know, look, he's like, I'm, we celebrating. 
we sell we've been on this boat for, for a long time for a long time i don't i don't complete this comment um you know i'm gonna turn up like gag the gag <laughs> Anyway, so as far as like me feeling like I like a more teaching me that I'll be a good mom, like being able to provide structure, being able to um, not only nurture her, but train her in a sense, because everybody has the same comments when they come up into a more like a more one. My mom over (laughs) my mom did not fool with dogs. But this is about the only dog she'll fool with. And that's, that's probably her best friend. Mm-hmm. She love, She would call and ask to make sure I fed or more. That's sweet. Like, that's sweet. But you know what? I was just thinking, like, um, we don't know. As we, as we were talking about just being obedient. Um, if you really look back over your life, like, if I, I'm, I've been in this kind of, like, reflective kind of state of, like, the different things I've done. And I could literally see God's hand in everything. And our, all of our journeys are different. And because he knows the beginning from the end, he knows exactly what you need. Mm-hmm. Right. And so um, I, too, you know, I had um, I got Bebo last year and I and I truly believe that was uh, a part of that. Like me being able to um, one, just care for somebody else inside myself. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I've been by my been staying by myself for, for a while. But two to 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 put me in a space where I'm caring for somebody that's you know that's not myself even me staying with my friend and her girls mm-hmm. like I absolutely love being in that space because one I get to be the fun fake auntie and just have all the conversations at the moment I want to have yeah. right but like they'll run up to me they be like oh can I get a hug and I'm not and I hadn't been the most and I and I and I realize it's not that I'm not affectionate because I just show my affection in different ways. I'm not that touchy feely type person, right? Yeah. But I'm like, can I get a hug? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. So I'm hugging on them and we spinning around in the kitchen and, and I'm getting to experience these things that if I wouldn't have been obedient and just done what I thought the Lord was telling me to do, I wouldn't have had that experience because it's a part of it's all of a, a part of the journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Most and definitely. I had to also like self examine, like I think it's it's natural it's natural to think every woman wants a baby because her ba- mm. her cuz her her body is naturally designed to to do so, right? So if she doesn't or if she doesn't have her own, does that make her less of a woman? That's so good. Right? So as I've had some complications and some 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 things through the uh through the years, you know, at 37 not saying that's a that's the it's over it's not over but I those are just conversations that I just have with myself like if that's not my story how would I feel about myself do I feel like I'm less of this and less of that um but also and I also had to ask myself why do I want to have a baby mm. and I think some of that I can be honest and say some of it was because I wanted to um do or or be what I wasn't what I didn't have growing mm. up you know as a as a a mom like my mom she she's amazing she did the best that she could but she was not that nurturing person yeah so it's like okay i want to have a little mini me so i can nurture on them a little bit you know what yeah. i'm saying but it, you know just really just going to god and just asking okay lord because i believe there's a purpose for everything you know and so um i'm so with you you know amor is definitely destined uh destined for but she's laying down I'm talking about you. you just I mean, down she just, me. okay. I mean, she just, she didn't got comfortable, y'all. Like, Destinedly destined for Jessica. She is. And that's why I can't, I don't, I don't, I know eventually, you know, things happen. Yeah. And I'm not even going to speak about it at this moment because I am not envisioning myself without my baby girl. However, um, I, I didn't know, like people would say all the time, like, oh, you do they the the babies cost and they do yeah they you know they cost money and stuff like that and I always you know when I'm traveling I have to consider like that's why she here with me today Mm -hmm. because she didn't have no siddle yeah like she mama mama wasn't available to watch her more so she had to come to work with me (laughs) which I trained her well enough to act right yeah so um so when people you know I don't know. That's made me confident because I'm, I'm more, I'm more really understand what I be saying. She like she, she got the common and the sense. Okay. Um, but also what Amor brought me was reassurance that love works. Mm-hmm. 
It does. Like, love really works. Because even, so, in the state of mind that I was in in Pensacola, like, I was, it, that's when I learned I fought the battle with depression. Mm. I, I battled with depression even before Pensacola. Didn't have a word for it. You didn't that's have language. why, like, no, 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 no. Like, mm. I, didn't, I didn't even know that p- taking pills for depression was a thing until... Pensacola, yeah. my Pensacola career. Okay, mm-hmm. that was a that was not an experience. It was a career. It was a job. It was <laughs> I worked Pensacola. <laughs> <laughs> they have this running joke that I hated Pensacola while I was living there, but I'll run down there and go to Pensacola like it is. It is nothing. I I do have some people that I really truly love from Pensacola. Some of them not are not there anymore, but just they'll, I call them my Pensacola clan because I. I really, um, I learned how to initiate and cultivate relationships. Um, and it was real awkward. Like, mm-hmm. I was just like, this is so awkward. I don't, I spent a lot of alone time mm-hmm. in Pensacola. But just like a Moore's embodiment. And like, they tell you that dogs are a reflection of you, the mm-hmm. owner. That's why I, Okay, pet peeve. Let's 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 rant for two seconds. Okay. Pit bulls. Mm-hmm. They are so, so, so frowned upon. They are. It's sad. It made, it made me sad too. It hurts. It breaks my heart. It absolutely breaks my heart because they are some of the sweetest breeds. The sweetest breeds that you will ever, 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 ever meet. But everybody, you go to Oh, I was. Oh, I was finna say a brand. Oh, don't do that, Jessica. Don't say the brand because they <laughs> they listen. You go to um these um pet stores that have um these services to clean your dogs and do certain things to your dogs, but they want to upcharge charge you based on the breed of the dog versus the behavior. Yeah, mm. girl. Mm. I never said it like that, but mm-hmm. they they want to upcharge you because of the just for the simple breed of the dog yeah. versus the behavior. And I was like, I told them they weren't getting my money. They was not getting my money. Why? Because that was not fair. That's very to me. That's prejudice. Yeah. That is that might be the right word. Maybe, yeah. Maybe the right good. word. But like, I didn't see. I didn't see a point in it. I didn't. I didn't see a point in it. So like. Pet, pit bulls are really the sweetest, the sweetest little beings. I went to, um, when I went to uh, inquire about an apartment, she, you know, I, before, because I, I did on the website, she called. She was like, oh, I just want to get, get a little information from you. And I said, well, before we go there, I saw on your website, y'all had some breed restrictions. Um, she was like, yeah, what kind of, what kind of um, animal do you have? I said, he's a dog. And she was like, okay, what is this breed? I said, he's a Bebo. Because he's a, he's, Bebo. he's a Bebo. That's he. That's what it is. I, mean, I had to make sure I heard that right. He's, he's a, Bebo. a Bebo. His name is Bebo, and that's what he is. He's a Bebo. He like he don't even fit in this aggressive like you know. I, I know that's where the, that's where she was going. Yeah. Like oh, is he a this da da da? And I was really thinking. I was like, dang, that's just like people like the to put you in the category, mm. you know, or of either something you've done in the past or something that's been associated with who you are, your past or a group of people. It's like, they count you out because that's of so what they weird. heard. Wow. Not of what they, what, not what they know by their experience or what, what they, they heard. heard. Yeah. Cause you never really experience. Like it's one thing. It's one thing to experience experience something for yourself and be traumatized that that's your own trauma go get go get your healing like i can say i hate dogs uh or rockweilers because because my neighbor's dog tried to they like she tried to attack me she and she was a rockweiler but she was a mother too like the thing is like god put that same like mother instinct into dogs or protection instinct into to animals as they did us and so Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's almost like we don't respect, we don't respect the creation or the DNA that God has put in all his creation. And so because, uh, oh, well, we're just going to say this is the standard and this is just the way it is. No, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. I My pinky toe got bit by a chihuahua. Mm. <laughs> it got 
fit by a chihuahua. They not making chihuahuas pay extra money. They not restricted either. And yes, I if you got a chihuahua, I got issues with you. If you got a chihuahua and it's not the Taco Bell dog, I got strong issues with you because I have not met a chihuahua yet. I didn't gave multiple chihuahuas chances, and they are the most uh, dogs ever, ever, ever. But my baby here, like right now, right now she's just she's at peace. I wish y'all could see her. I wish y'all could. She just laying down, being a good dog, just. Being an obedient dog, okay? And she is now getting up. <laughs> she knows I'm talking about her. She knows I'm talking about her. But I think being a dog parent, I think this is where this conversation is like really going, which is good. You don't think that some of your, a more come sit down. You don't think some of your decisions, well, your decision on but just getting a dog, you think it's a companion, you think it's, about being cute and all that stuff like that but no god really ordained a more to be in my life for multiple reasons just to support um to teach me something that i've never said out loud that i had a fear of am i going to be a good mother or not you know um am i going to be able to have this quote-unquote intense schedule and still be able to balance motherhood but because I'm, i've raised them more the way i raised her look at me sound like I'm a mom. come on because i raised them more the way i raised her i can trust that she is going to be consistently obedient in whatever atmosphere she's in and so you have to That's good. you i have to trust myself to where my character is good enough to where even I, I'm still learning stuff with a more like I'm still learning. I think that's the beautif- beautification about um, being a parent. I'm not a parent yet, but I think that's the beautification about being a parent because yeah, you think we, you think that you know everything until you actually have that child mm. child in front of you. Like I, I thought I was going to be like this real strict mom and people still think I probably am, but Low key, my sister has taught me how to be a better mother just watching her. Mm. She's so patient with them kids. She's like, okay, what did you do? Why did you do this? Let's talk about it. And they just have conversations. Like they real deal. Now she will turn up because okay. Kenny is in us. Okay. Okay. No, no doubt about it. However, I've never witnessed a parent have have the level of conversation with their child as Kendall has, you know? And so I think that before, you know, trying to get a real baby like I did back in the day, my God, thank you for your saving grace. God allowed me to experience being a, a dog parent. And it, it it really, it really changed my life. That's dope. It really changed my life. You good? Yeah. Yeah good yeah yeah i know that was random yeah it was random yeah it was random it's because a more so this is a more inspired episode (laughs) not too deep but it it brought up some stuff yeah y'all talk to us back in the comments man i'll be curious to know your experience about being a dog parent your experience if you well if you are a pet parent because we can't discriminate you might have a frog you might have one or a lizard a snail or a lizard or a cat or a cat you might be a cat parent really (laughs) you might you might do cats i'm allergic i'm allergic to cats I'm so tickled at you. Listen, I'm for real, man. I I found out the hard way I was allergic to cats. Like I almost thought stopped breathing. You know, um, one thing um that just brings me back, like, is I believe there's a lesson in everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like how how else would you know where you are unless you've been tested in that in that space? So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm just in a a season where I'm just trying to catch the lessons because that's good. I don't some of them lessons I don't want to repeat. I don't repeat a couple of them. So child, child, that'll be a whole nother podcast you know, talking about some with um, repeated lessons. You know, don't want to repeat them lessons. So I'm just grateful for the, sp- the for being in certain spaces in this season where I'm just learning and I'm aware of what 
kind of what God is doing. You, you think you may know, but he'd be like, yeah, no, stack your mind, make your booty shine, and just something else, you know what I'm saying? But I just lo- I love this. Um, just, to, just being in this aware space is good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And you, you just have to notice that God's – the best thing I could realize about – the faith and being in the faith and a relationship with God is God. God would literally use anything, anything, anything to expose the kingdom in you. Mm-hmm. He will literally use anything yeah. to expose the kingdom in you. Right. And so think it night strange when you start having desires, like where did it come from? Like I didn't have a, des- I was thinking about, I was thinking about, you know, a dog, but now I was like, no, I attached the money, the the money to it versus the value. Like I saw the cost versus the value, and I was like, I ain't doing it. But that was probably one of the best decisions I made. Um, with a more, I had something to look forward to. Yeah. I really did. And so, if you're thinking about uh, getting a dog, I'm an avid for it. Yeah. I'm an avid for having a dog, especially if you're single. A more get down, woman of God. Get down, um, get down. Especially if you're single, but. Yeah, y'all, y'all chop it up with us in uh in the comments, man. We this one, this one was quick, um, and I'm more inspired, obviously, because I was not planning on doing that right now, not talking about her, but y'all let us know in the comments. Talk back to us. Talk back to us about your experience being a dog parent. Maybe we can have a a a, a prayer in the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> prayer in the dog park. We just asked the podcast. All right, you guys. Well, we love you. Y'all have an amazing, amazing week. Until next time, life could be much more simple if you just ask. See you later.